In this video, we'll review the directional control valve of a Borgo independent drill. We're going to talk about the raise lower for the openers on a Borgo drill. We're looking at a 3330 SE high float frame. So this will be common to pretty much all of our drills. We'll look at the high float block first before we look at the standard block. So let's go over to the front of the drill. Where we find the decal indicating what each of the hoses is. So we have our raised lower with the white heat shrinks and our wing lift with the red heat shrinks. The orange heat shrink, black heat shrink are for our fans. wing lift hoses, opener hoses. We have an isolation valve here to close off the flow for safety. If we follow our depth circuit hoses, our wing lift hoses, back to the valve, wing lift over here, opener here. We come into the block on TRTR DCP and we go back to the tractor on TRTR DCR. When the oil enters the block, it first travels to the directional control solenoid up here. The default position for the openers with no power to this solenoid is openers going down. Effective way to test that you make sure your hydraulics are engaged in the proper direction. Engage your opener circuit, pull the power off on this coil and the opener should be going down. If we want to raise the openers we apply power to this valve and it'll raise the openers. So let's focus in on the opener circuit first. So we have pressure oil coming in on the TRTR DCP port and return oil coming in on the TRTR DCR port. It has to be engaged in the proper direction. If we reverse the flow a lot of functions would not work properly on this drill. So the oil coming from the P port goes directly up to the directional control solenoid. Once it enters the directional control solenoid it has to pick between raising and lowering. I have a cutaway valve grabbed over on the bench over here. And let's focus in on it. So on that valve, we have a P port. That P port is directly connected to the pressure coming into the valve. When the openers are in the lowering position, the A port sends pressure oil to the base end of the opener cylinders. The rod end is connected to the B port, so that's receiving oil when the openers are going down. You can see we have an electrohydraulic spool with a coil on the end. On the blind side, there is a cap with a spring that pushes the spool back this way. So the natural state of this spool, so with the spring pushing the spool over, is a connection between P and A to push the openers down. That makes so that it's a, quite easy to identify the proper direction of flow. If we remove the power to the coil, the openers should be going down. 
because we need to have power to raise our openers, we added a manual override. So if we screw this screw in, it's the same as adding power to the coil and we can manually override the spool within this block. Make sure when we're done that this is backed all the way out so this spool is allowed to fully travel. The other ports we have on this valve are the T ports. There's two of them, they're interconnected and they are the return path. From time to time what could happen is the openers would be sticking in the raising position. So you can first verify that it's not residual power, so there's power remaining on the coil. That's pretty easy to check. Just remove the power source, disconnect it. If the openers are still sticking in the raised position, it's indicating a problem with the spool inside here. First, make sure it's not the manual override screw. Once you've verified all that, you can remove all the pressure from the circuit. Make sure all the gauges have no pressure. Remove this cap from the blind side. And inside, there's two little springs. Probably what's happened over time is maybe they've lost a little bit of their free length. You could expand it a bit if you wanted to. But a more effective way is just to put a dime in between in the bottom here of the cap and then put your springs back in and then reinstall it. You're just going to apply a little more pressure to that spool and shuttle that over. Now in the raising cycle, we're simply applying power to the coil that shuttles this spool against that spring and now the B port receives pressure going out to the rod end of the cylinders to raise the openers and the A port becomes the return path. So let's review what we learned so far. So we've got pressure oil that enters our valve block we're looking at the drawing for the 3441-53 high float block. I'm going to zoom in on this area of the drawing so we can focus in on what's going on with the opener raised lower. So when we look at it, we've got our tractor DCP port that's receiving pressure oil from the tractor and the tractor DCR port that's sending oil back to the tractor. The oil must be engaged always in the same direction. So when that enters the high flow block, it goes over to an internal porting over to the directional control solenoid. We can notice that our returns are ported together to both the tank ports, T and T. So we're just going to have a quick look at the bottom side of the valve. So this would be the connection point that would go on this part of the valve. So we've got our P port that's ported directly to the tractor and our two tank ports that are ported directly to the tractor as well on the return side of things. So we talked about when there's no power to the coil, there is pressure that runs from the P port over to A port, and then the A port, as we can see in our drawing over here, makes its way through our pressure reduction to change the open down force, and then down to the DRLP and then out to the base end of the hydraulic cylinders for the openers as you see in the left hand corner of this page. 
Then when we go to raise the openers, we shift the spool in this valve over to open a connection between the P and the B. So what that does is now the B port, as we see in our drawing, is pressure. Pressure makes its way out and pressures up the rod end of the hydraulic cylinders to the openers you see in the left hand side of the image to raise the openers. At the same time the B becomes pressure, the A becomes the return path, and when it's in the lowering state the A is the pressure and the B becomes the return path.